Hello and welcome to my tutorial on basic layout using WX widgets. We'll be talking about sizers, a simple and powerful mechanism for arranging your controls on the screen with rules for scaling, margins and alignment. We'll also touch briefly on splitters, which are variable size containers used frequently for side panels on modern apps. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. As a quick note before we start, I'm using a CMake template. You can definitely check my other video where I'm explaining everything about it. Uh, but uh, if you have your WX widget set up, we can just start with an empty main CPP file. Let's start with very basic WX widgets application. Here's our basic application class, where we'll be instantiating our main frame. Our main frame is just a, just a simple WX frame class, nothing fancy, just a constructor, nothing else. And here in on init, we create a new frame, passing some parameters. and just showing the frame. We also need the entry point to our program. As you can see, we don't have main function implemented. We'll just use the WX widget macro, which implements the main function in the way that is compatible with given operating system. Here is our empty app, nothing fancy, but it will be a good starting point for our experiments with sizers. Let's start by adding some controls. Here is a basic WX panel, just a dummy container control to illustrate the concept of sizers. And notice the first argument, that's the parent control for our panel and in our case is the main window. Also notice that even though we allocate the panel using the new operator, we never delete it in code. In WX widgets, adding the control to the window hierarchy by setting the parent moves the ownership of the object to the framework, so WX widget itself will be responsible for managing the memory for our panel and deleting it when the window is closed. This is how the application looks. By default, the panel stretches in all directions and we have no control over its positioning. Let's change that by adding a sizer. A sizer is not a control like a panel, button, list view and so on. It's more like an abstract entity that can be attached to a control to dynamically handle its position and size. Here we have a simple box sizer with a vertical direction, meaning that when we add more objects to that sizer, they will be stacked vertically. Take a look at the second parameter of the add function. That's a proportion parameter, a number that indicates how much space the control takes up in its parent in the direction of the sizer, in this case in the vertical direction. The value of zero means the panel will stay the same size no matter the size of the parent control. The third parameter of the add function is a set of various flags. Some of these determine margins, others are used to set rules for sizing the control in the direction perpendicular to the sizer direction. We add WX expand because we want the sizer to expand along the horizontal direction. Proportion is an integer that can be larger than zero. In that case, the sizer will stretch the control in its direction and the proportion value will determine how much space the control will take up relative to other controls in the same sizer. Since we added just one control with the proportion equal to one, this single panel is going to be stretched fully in the direction of the sizer. Let's add some margins. The flags in the third parameter can be combined using the OR operator. WX all means we want margins on all four sides of the control and we set the margin width in the last parameter. We may want to set just one margin. This is as simple as changing the flag, in this case to WX left. Things get a little bit more interesting as we add more controls. We are adding another panel here and changing its color just to make it easier to see what's happening on the screen.
we add our panel to the sizer and now things start to get interesting with proportions. Both controls in our sizer have proportion value equal to 1, which means they will stretch one to one, having equal heights when we scale the main window. And this is exactly what happens. The panels always have equal height. They also stretch horizontally in the direction perpendicular to the sizer because we set the WXX band flag. The margins look uneven though, because the middle space between the boxes consists of the bottom margin of the upper panel and the top margin of the lower panel. We can fix this by removing the bottom margin of the first panel. Much better. Let's explore the proportions a bit. Here we set the proportion to 0 for the first panel, the second one has still proportion equal to 1. In this case, as we can see, the size of the top panel does not change and the bottom panel takes up all the remaining space. Changing the proportions to 1 and 2 will make the second panel take up twice as much space as the first one. Sizers can be nested to achieve more interesting layouts. Here we are adding a third panel. The panels themselves are on the same level, meaning they have the same parent, but they will stretch in different directions, so we'll need more sizers. The first sizer remains a vertical box sizer, and we are adding the second one. The second sizer will lay out its controls in the horizontal direction, so we'll have one panel on top and two on the bottom side by side. Pay attention to the sizer hierarchy. The first child of the main sizer is our top panel, but the second one is not a control, it's another sizer. This second sizer is used to align two bottom panels horizontally. Here's how it looks like. One panel on top and two panels on the bottom. Let's just quickly fix the margins here. Now this looks much better. We can experiment with proportions here, making both bottom panels have the same width. And maybe changing the top to bottom proportions to 1 to 2, while keeping the proportions of the bottom panels 1 to 1. So the bottom part is always two times taller than the top part, while the panels on the bottom have the same width. What if we need more complicated layouts with controls organized in the hierarchy? Mind you, this is different than the sizer hierarchy we explored before. This time the last panel will be inside the bottom panel, and to make this work we need to reorganize the sizers as well. Since the last panel, named panel bottom right here, is a child of the bottom panel, the main sizer does not need to know about its existence. We are just adding the top and bottom panel to the sizer and handle the positioning of the bottom panel's children separately. We will do that with another sizer. This one operates only inside the panel bottom, so this time we are setting it as the panel sizer. We were able to position the last panel inside the bottom panel with its own positioning rules. For now it only has margins, but with some changes we can achieve some more interesting layouts. Disabling the expand flag forces the panel to stay the same height. Remember that this flag works in the direction perpendicular to the sizer. Here the sizer direction is WX horizontal, so the panel does not expand vertically, it does expand horizontally because that is controlled by the proportion parameter which is equal to 1. If we change the proportion to 0, now the panel just stays inside without changing its dimensions. The flags in the add function can also determine alignment. 
Let's align our panel to the right. First, we need to change the sizer direction to vertical, because again, flex work perpendicular to the sizer, and aligning to the right means aligning along the horizontal axis. Almost there, we just need to change proportion to fill the bottom panel vertically. And here is the result. We can also center a control inside another control, although this is a bit more complicated. We will need two sizes for the bottom panel, one to control horizontal movement and the other to center vertically. Here the inner centering sizer handles the positioning of the panel. The proportion parameter is set to zero so that the panel does not stretch and we center it vertically, again perpendicular to the sizer's axis. We put this sizer in our bottom sizer with proportion 1, so the centering sizer itself will expand vertically and center horizontally. This may look a bit confusing at first, but if that's the case, pause the video and analyze the code, or experiment with it, this idea yourself, the mechanics of this layout will quickly become clear. All these layout ideas can be used with regular controls, of course. Here we create a simple window with a stretchable list view and standard OK and Cancel buttons aligning to the bottom right. First we add our basic controls, the default list view, with some column and some items. and our buttons. Then we implement the sizer hierarchy, just like in one of our previous examples. One sizer for aligning the controls vertically, and the other for managing the horizontal position of the buttons. Here's the complete window, you can stretch it in any direction you want, and the controls behave as they should. Ok, that's it for sizers, let's move on to splitters. For starters, we need to include the correct header for splitters. And construct the splitter object. As you can see, this time our panels add the splitter as a parent. This is different than with sizers, because splitters are controls. The WX splitter window class derives from WX frame. So we add the panels, setting their background colors, and then we call split vertically method. The splitter is ready, but it doesn't move with the mouse. It changes the position only after the user releases the mouse button. Let's change this by adding some flags to the splitter. We we'll also change the sash style to fin to make it look more modern. Let's also limit the size of the panels by setting set minimum paint size. This looks much better. We can of course nest the splitters, for example add the vertical splitter on the right. This is pretty straightforward, we just need to use correct parents for our panels.
And here we have a nice looking template for our applications. We can add more controls to it and make it look like a real, real piece of software. One last thing I'd like to mention is sash gravity. This setting controls which part of the splitter changes the size when the parent window is resized and which stays the same. The value of one makes the top or the left pane change size. The value of half makes the panels equal. And gravity set to zero makes the bottom or the right panel automatically resize. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, consider subscribing. Uh, this is a fairly new channel and I have some ambitious plans for it with new videos not only about WX widgets but also other programming topics from teaching frameworks, programming languages to AI. So like, subscribe and see you in the next one.